In this video, I'll go over the difference between two plugins, mini.files and neotree. I have both of them open here in my browser. Here's the repo for mini.files. If you like this plugin, make sure to start it. I think it's a great project. If you want to find out more, go through the documentation here, but I'll give you a quick demo in a little bit. Here's the other project, neotree. If you like this, also make sure to start it. Honestly, I think that mini.files has way fewer stars than it deserves. As you'll be able to see in a little bit, I think you're going to love this plugin. So what is mini.files? It's just a file explorer. I open it with letter E. The great thing about it is that it shows me a preview on the right side. I like that quite a lot. You can disable that preview. It's optional. Just let me navigate around here. Notice that I'm moving through different files and I can see the preview for each one of them. Notice that I have a test directory created here. Inside here, I have two folders and I can navigate in and out pressing H or L. I can move to the items below or above using regular BIM motions. I'm just pressing J to go down and K to go up. One other thing that I love about this plugin is that it allows me to manipulate files really easily. Notice that this new directory B is empty. I'm going to create a few files inside. And the way to create or modify files is like if you were inside a new BIM buffer. So I'm just going to press I to enter insert mode. I'm going to type the name of the file. I gave it this name. I'm going to exit out of insert mode. In my case, press KJ. I'm going to press S to sync the changes, get a confirmation. And I'm going to press Y. That creates the file. I'm just going to duplicate this file because I want to create more copies. I'm just going to hit YY and I just pressed P multiple times to create more files. I want to rename these files. I'm just going to move to the right. I'm going to enter vertical visual mode with control V. I'm going to go down. Now I'm going to press G control A. Notice that the numbers were increased. I'm going to save these changes S then Y. But now let's say that I want to move these directories inside a folder in this directory. I'm going to create a new directory. I'm just going to press O. I'm just going to give it a name random to create a directory. Make sure you specify a forward slash at the end. I'm going to exit insert mode. I'm going to press S to sync the changes, press Y. Now I'm just going to enter visual mode, shift B to select the entire line. I'm going to go down, select all the files. I'm going to press D to delete them. I'm going to go inside this directory. I'm going to press D to paste them here. Notice that I haven't synced the changes yet. I haven't pressed S. I can make other changes in the meantime. What if I want to go to this new directory B? I want to create other files here. I created this new directory B. I'm just going to duplicate the file a few times. Now I'm going to rename these files the same way that I did before with control B. Then I'm going to press G control A. I haven't synced the changes yet. So now I'm going to press S. Notice the pop-up shows me what actions are going to be taken. Created and these four files. I'm going to press Y here for yes. Notice that the files are created. If I go back to this other directory, my files are there. Let's say that I want to move all of the files that are inside both of the directories to a new directory outside. So I just come here and I create a new directory on the line below by pressing O. New directory all. Make sure you specify the forward slash. You press S to sync the changes and you press Y. A new directory is created. I will go in here and grab all these files. Press D to delete them. D to paste them here. Now I will go to the other directory. I'm going to grab all these files. Press D to delete them. I'm going to go back and I paste them here. I'm going to press S to sync the changes. Notice the confirmation message shows me what's happening. The files are being moved to the new directory. I'm going to press Y for yes. And all the files are here. I deleted the files. They no longer exist here because I pressed D. But you could have pressed Y to copy them instead. So as you can tell, it's really easy and fast to manipulate files using mini dot files. That's not something I can do in NeoTree. And the reason why it's that simple is because it allows you to navigate between directories and you can see what you have on the right and on the left. I'm going to delete everything that I just did right now. What is going to happen to those files? Let's see. I'm just going to select both of them. I'm going to press D to delete them. I'm going to press S. And I'm going to press Y to confirm. By default, the files will be permanently removed. I wouldn't recommend you to leave that option as a default because it's too dangerous. Let me show you where you can change that. This is my configuration file, mini.files. I'm going to leave you a link to my dot files in the video description in case you want to grab this entire file. Something that you have to keep in mind is that I use the lazyvim.org distribution. So I grab the configuration from there. You can find the link here. I just applied a few changes. I just changed the key maps. Here's one that I changed. The default for this was L, but I switched it to enter. So if I press enter, it opens the file and it quits mini.files. Otherwise, if you press L on a file to move to the right, it just opens the files without quitting mini.files. That is useful if you need to open multiple files. To move to the left, I use go out plus. So the difference between these two is that go out plus only shows me one item to the right. As this one, on the other hand, shows you all the items to the right when you're moving to the left. Try, see what works for you. Resets by default is set to backspace, but that key is too far away for me because I use a regular keyboard. So I just changed it to comma, which is closer. What does this do? So let's say that I'm in mini.files. I'm navigating through different directories. Notice that I went all the way back to the main directory.files latest. If I want to go back to where I was when I opened 
mini.files, files, I can press comma to reset it. Colon, if I press dot or period, notice that it reveals the current working directory. And that's something that I changed as well. The default is the at symbol. I changed it to a dot. Synchronize, the default is the equal sign. Again, that's too far away from me. So I changed it to the letter S. The great thing is that you have a confirmation message. So even if you press S by mistake, you're gonna get the pop-up. I haven't had any issues with that at all. If you don't like the preview that's shown on the right of each file, here's where you can disable it. But I think that's one of the greatest features this plugin offers. Remember that I use LazyVim. By default, LazyVim uses NeoTree, but I'm setting many dot files here. To permanently delete, I would highly recommend you to set this to false so your files are kept somewhere even after you delete them. You will have to manually clean this up or maybe set up a cron job or something that deletes all the files inside this directory after X amount of days, up to you. But if you want to know what that path is, where the files are sent to when you delete them, just grab this command, paste it. You're going to notice here, local share neobin. Let me switch to that real quick. I have it in another tmux session, local share neobin, meaning that files dash trash, just going to list everything in here. Notice the last modified date, 541. Let me get to this directory. Here it is. I'm just going to list the files here. And here they are. Here's where I specify how to open the plugin. I use leader E to open the directory of the current file. I also configure this other key map, leader capital E. I press it right now and it opens the current working directory. Notice that it opened my dot files latest. I rarely use this, but I just left it there as an option. This configuration below is from Folky from the lazyvim.org documentation. You'll be able to find it there. But here at the bottom of the plugin, I added something doesn't come enabled by default. If you want the plugin to show you the git status of files, you need to add this code from here to the bottom of the file. I left the link to the Reddit post where I found this. And here is also the link to the gist that shows the code. So what does this do? If I modify this file, I'm going to add something here to test. I'm going to open mini.files. You will notice that there's this little green dot next to it because its git status has been modified. I would say it's a little bit useful in case you like having that, but I already got used to open lazy git to see which changes I have pending. So if I open lazy git, you can see that I have this change here pending. If I would have changes pending in other files, they would show listed here as well. But that's something optional is you want to add it. Remember that all of this is going to be in my dot files. I switched over to mini dot files around three months ago. I used NeoTree before that as my default file explorer. It's going to take you a few days to get used to it. But once you get past that, I'm pretty sure you're going to love it. You may wonder why I don't use oil. My grandma uses oil. No, just kidding. I just don't like the way that I have to navigate through directories in oil and go back to the previous directory. I cannot see what's inside each directory. So I have to go into the directory to be able to see what's in. I mean, I use oil to SSH into devices and edit files that way, but not to navigate and manipulate files. Personally, I think that mini dot files is like a fusion between oil and NeoTree, which makes it perfect. And now let's go to NeoTree. Do I only use mini dot files? No, I use both of the plugins. If I press leader R, you're going to see that NeoTree pops up. I don't manipulate files here. There's only one specific reason that I use NeoTree for. Let's say that I'm documenting something here and I need to have a tree open because I'm going to reference my tree structure along the way. I need to have this open at all times. For example, my plugins are inside the NeoBean plugins directory. Just as an example, notice that inside I have the color schemes directory. Notice that in the NeoBean parent directory, I have the whole NeoVim distributions to try out, like kickstart, lazyvim, NeoBean. So as you were able to tell, it was pretty simple to document all this by having NeoTree open. That wouldn't have been possible with mini.files. And let's not even talk about oil. I think having the tree sometimes visible to you is quite useful. Some specific situations. I'm going to press leader R to close it again. And I'm just going to go over the options that I have configured for this plugin. Remember, this is in my dot files. I'm going to leave it in the video description so you can go and grab it. If you want to disable NeoTree, you set this to false. I disable these two key maps because I'm using them with mini dot files, leader E and leader capital E. This is a key map that I created myself, leader R. It checks if NeoTree is open. If it's not, it opens it. But if it is open, it closes it. It's just basically a toggle. Notice that it's set to reveal so that it shows me the file that I'm currently on. I'm going to press leader R and it showed me the file that I was working on, which is NeoTree. If I go to the other file, mini that files, and I press leader R, it's going to reveal that file. I alternate between the last two files pressing leader space. So that's how I can switch between them so fast. I have a video in which I show you how I alternate between files and team accessions. You'll be able to find that in the top right corner. I disabled this option because I was having some random issues. I set this custom delete command. I'm using macOS. So if I delete a file by doing this, it's going to send it to the trash instead of using the default delete option. I don't even remember what that was. I left the config here in case you want to grab it. And I also left 
the link to where I got this from. And that's it. That's the entire configuration for NeoTree. So just as a summary, I use MiniDAP files as my primary file explorer as of today. I use it to navigate and to manipulate files really easily. I can move them around, delete them, modify their names. And if I specifically need to document something related to my tree structure, I use NeoTree. I don't have other use cases for NeoTree nowadays. There's way more file explorers. These are the two that I'm currently using. I would like to know which file explorer you use and why so that I can take a look and maybe test them out. If you like this video, remember to do what it says here, like it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video.